Hey good people and welcome back to the channel. Now I'ma just cut to the chase and tell you that if you haven't seen episode 12 of Merit at First Sight Nashville yet, then you might want to treat it like a bill collector and avoid it. If you have seen it, then you're probably as filled as regret as I am. But for this video, I plan to give you 10 reasons as to why you might want to skip the episode. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. At number 10, I gotta talk about the ridiculous goat yoga scene. Now I've heard about goat yoga before, but I've never actually seen it play out. And to be honest, it looks as silly as it sounds. During this scene, Chris, Nicole, and her father have the goat yoga session where they are doing yoga poses and letting real live goats jump on their backs. They all look like they're having fun during the scene, but you couldn't pay me enough to willingly have a goat jump on my back. Now during the scene, Nicole's father spends a great deal of time telling Chris how Nicole was as a child, but by the end of the scene, Nicole's father still has some hesitations about Chris's intentions with Nicole. And at this rate, I doubt that Nicole's father will ever approve of Chris. At number 9, Kirsten and Shaq are the first couple to meet with Dr. Peppers, and what was so frustrating about watching this scene was seeing Kirsten and Shaq talk about the difficulties of their childhood and realizing that those difficulties have absolutely nothing to do with why Kirsten isn't physically attracted to Shaq. Now don't get me wrong, it was nice to get some character development for Kirsten and Shaq, but what does their childhood traumas have to do with the price of tea in China? Kirsten is not attracted to Shaq plain and simple. And to me, there's really no sense in trying to blame Shaq and Kirsten's lack of chemistry on their childhood issues. At number eight, we get a filler scene of Clint talking to his friend about his experience being married to Gina. They go on for several minutes about how Clint is struggling to get to know Gina on a deeper level and how Clint is an open book. This scene had Captain Obvious written all over it, and to me, it was a waste of time. At number seven, Jasmine and Eris are the second couple to meet with Dr. Peppers. And during this meeting, I was happy to see Jasmine give a very candid assessment of her experience being married to Eris and I also appreciated how Jasmine provided some backstory in describing how she dealt with her past issues with self-esteem. Where the scene goes left is when Dr. Pepper asked Eris about his childhood experiences and Eris shares his long history of losing loved ones. But just like with Kirsten and Shaq, I highly doubt that Eris' past experiences hold any bearing on why he's not physically attracted to Jasmine. It seems like Eris is given a free pass to waste Jasmine's time which is counterproductive to the process in my opinion. At number six, there's a scene of Kirsten asking Shaq with help with her real estate business, and Shaq is actually spending time with Kirsten and giving her some sound advice. In Kirsten's production interview, she claims that a man that shares many of the qualities that Shaq has is a turn on for her. But in reality, Kirsten would have no problem getting knocked up by now if Shaq was a guy that she was physically attracted to. In my opinion, this scene is nothing more than another filler scene. At number five, there's a scene with Jasmine and Eris playing one of those Q&A games that production gives cast members when they need to film a certain scene. And in this scene, Jasmine is being extremely passive aggressive while Eris is acting like nothing is wrong. The scene was very hard to watch because it's clear that Jasmine doesn't want to be there and it's clear that Eris knows that Jasmine is right to feel the way that she does but he's unapologetic for treating her the way that he's done in the process. At number four, we get a scene of Clint and Gina meeting with Dr. Peppers, and during the scene, Gina claims that she struggles establishing a safe space with men. Once again, in my opinion, Gina's past experiences have little to no bearing on her lack of attraction to Clint. But when Clint claims that he is an open book and he tries to talk to Gina, Gina then claims that Clint doesn't ask her any of the deep questions. Now all of us have seen the typical conversations between Clint and Gina, and best believe those conversations either go round and round the surface level boundaries, or Gina turns the conversation into an opportunity to talk about her hair salon. If Clint hasn't asked Gina any deep questions lately, then it's likely because he has hit a brick wall while trying to talk to her. At number three, we get a scene of Eris meeting with Jasmine's mom. The scene was marketed as Eris trying to get some insight on Jasmine from the mother, but in reality, the scene was all about Eris telling the mother a one-sided version of events of how Jasmine won't open up to him. 
In my opinion, Jasmine likely already told her mother about the issues that she and Eris have. And I think the mother was waiting on Eris to be honest about his issues with her, instead of painting himself to be the victim. But to me, this scene was yet another waste of time to watch. At number two, we have Shaq having a body paint session with Kirsten. And while it was intriguing to see Kirsten's high beams throughout the scene, the energy and vibes that Kirsten and Shaq were giving one another came off as somewhat forced and lacked genuine chemistry, which leads me to believe one of three scenarios. Either the show is giving Kirsten and Shaq a horrible edit and they're really feeling each other. Maybe Kirsten and Shaq are misleading production and the other couples like Alexis and Justin did last season. Or Kirsten is just going along with liking Shaq because she wants to be likable after asking for a divorce on decision day. Nevertheless, the complete 180 from Kirsten on the issue of kissing just caught me off guard. And at number one, now normally the regular season of Married at First Sight has 17 episodes, which means we would have four more episodes left before decision day, but prior to the start of the season, I saw somewhere that this season would have 25 episodes, and the previews at the end of this episode indicated that we might be in for the halfway point of the season. Now I'm not sure if I can do another 13 episodes of this madness, but I guess with each passing episode, this season is coming closer to an end. However, I'm hoping that I'm wrong and we only have five episodes left. But this marks the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments related to the video or the episode, feel free to leave them below in the comment section and I'll be sure to reply to everybody. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.